Okay, so when we try and memorize information, right, we think that it's going into our head, and it kind of is, but the problem we have is that we just forget. We forget the information, we forget what's going in there, we have to go back and repeat. Repeat over and over and over again, right? And it just becomes stressful, right? Have you ever repeated information over and over again and still forgot? Well, that's what generally happens. So what we need to do is we need to be able to find an approach, a system, so we can store that information, right? And not just keep it in there and try and find wherever it is, where there's no location. Let me explain. Let's say this is your head. I'm not sure if you can see that um, or if it's clear. Let me see. All right, let's say this is your head. All right, we've got an eye and maybe you're smiling. All right, that's your head. And information is going in there, right? Let's say this is some um, information, right? It's going in there. Now, where's that being stored, right? This is the problem. We don't know where the information is being stored. Yes, it's being processed in certain parts of the brain, but where is the storage address, right? We need an address for the information to go in. So at the moment, there is no real address or location. It's like a filing cabinet, right? Or folders on your computer. Um, at least if you've got information that you want to store away on your computer, you can pop them onto the folders, right? So therefore, you probably know where all the files are on your computer mostly because you know where it's stored, right? It's not the same here because we just read information, whatever it is, whether you're studying, whether you're uh, you know, reading something in general, uh, whether you're trying to remember someone's name, whatever it is, we're trying to to store it out in the wilderness, in our brain, right? Without any location, so it's really difficult. So what we do is we go back and repeat, repeat over and over again, trying to solidify that information into long-term memory. But it doesn't necessarily stay in there, right? Repetition, while it's a memory strategy, it's very, very weak and it's difficult to rely on, right? Yes, there's some people that have mastered repetition, but you know what, I've used it for years and I've never really had success with it, all right? So, what can we do? Let's have a look, all right? What we need to do is we need to create little storage blocks in our head, right? Like folders, all right? Let's say that's, that's your brain, you've got those little storage components and you can have as many of these components as you want, right? Not 10, 15, 20, you can have literally a thousands, right? You obviously have to know how to create them. So we'll just go through the very basics of it. Then what you do is you add whatever you need to store, you add into these blocks of information, right? So whether that's 10 things you want to remember, whether that's a thousand things you want to be able to remember, they can be stored into those folders in your brain, right? And then what happens is let's say... <laughs> You know, the information's gone, right? Let's just redraw your eye, right? Let's say the information's gone, and then someone says, hey, what was that bit of information on? What was that person saying? What was the name of such and such? What was, you know, this talk about whatever it is? Uh, what was that bit of law about? What was this, uh, you know, bit of information for the medical exam? All that sort of stuff, right? Then what you can say is, okay, let me just go to the folders in my head. There they are. Oh, that was that, that was that, that was this person's name, that was that address, and so on. Right? You can go back and recall these perfectly. Right? That's the thing we need to be able to do. We need to be able to create these holding spots. So you're saying, Tansel, how do I create these holding spots? Right? There's a number of ways. Right? A number of ways. Uh, one way that I talk about is the method of loci or memory palace, journey technique, whatever you want to call it. I've got uh, quite a few videos on that uh, in my YouTube channel, right? But very basically, I'll just explain it here. It's essentially the method of loci. It's uh, walking through a familiar location or a spot and adding points, almost like points of interest, right? Locations to store information in. So I'll just go through a very basic one. So let's see, you can, you can see that, yep. So I'm just gonna show you five locations, right? And how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna set it up that my main location, my main journey, right, is my house, right? So I've got my house 
and I've got five points heading into my house. Now, the method of loci, or memory palace, whatever you want to call it, it's a sequential order remembering system. So you remember things in order. If you want to randomly, you can try this, but you'll have to sift through a certain thing. So I'm just showing you how to remember in order. Most of the things are like that anyway. So the first thing that I see now, what I want to do is because it's in order, I want to start from, say, the start of my house and go through to the end, right? So the start of my house, I've got a fence. So I'll put fence in there. And as I move through from the fence, I've got, uh, what have I got? I've got a door. Then from my door, I've got like a living area and stuff, but it, it, it's too general for me. I want to be able to pick something specific. So I open the door that's closest to my front door and it's a bedroom. Now, instead of saying bedroom in here, I need to be able to pick something specific, right? It's a lot easier to memorize that way. I'll, as I'll go through, we'll, we'll explain. So in my bedroom, I've got a window, right? And I'm going through this in a sort of... Um, clockwise order of how I see it, just to create some order in my brain. So I've got a window, I've got a bed, and I've got like uh, some drawers, you know, let's say, right, some drawers in there full of clothes. Okay, so I've got those five things in there. Now, if I want to memorize something, all I have to do is pop them into these locations, right? That's it. These locations are the folders in my head, right? So if I want to remember something, let's take something very basic, right? I know I've done this in a lot of videos. Uh, and if you know what this is, you can sort of skip this part. Um, so let's say you want to remember five items, all right? And the first item is chocolate, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say chocolate and fence, right? And this is where the, the memory techniques come into play, right? Or more so the memory principles. Principles are how you make things more memorable, right? So chocolate and fence, you could say, oh, the fence was chocolate colored. Well, that's, it's great, you can visualize it, but you can say the fence was made out of chocolate. Now, now you're delving into creativity territory, right? Imagination territory, and that's what you're meant to do when you're trying to memorize something, try and use your full abilities, right? So the fence was made out of chocolate, maybe someone's taken a bite as they're walking past my house, right? Silly story, but you remember it, right? Next one, you got door, and let's say um, a mobile phone, right? You've got a mobile phone, maybe someone throws it at the door, it makes this loud noise, and you open the door and there's mobile phone, there's pieces everywhere, right? I'm sure you probably wanted to do that with your phone. <laughs> so mobile phone and door. Then I've got windows, and let's say, um, I'm just looking around the office now, let's say a glass, right? A cup, glass cup, we've got a glass cup, and windows. Now, windows, sort of glass, a glass cup, you're thinking, oh no, I'm going to make a story, it's going to get all mixed up. Well, this is where you use your imagination. Maybe the glass cup is really big and you're trying to fit it through this window and it's not happening, it's not getting through. So you smash the glass through it and the glass, glass cup, doesn't get broken at all. Right? Now, in your brain, you're going, but that's not possible, the glass is going to break. Well, in your head, remember, you can do whatever you want. This is the power of the brain. Right, so your glass and windows, probably not the best example, but <laughs> you will see. Then we've got bed. Let's say bed and what have we got? We have, I'm just going to go around here and check. You know what? Bed and pen, right? Bed and pen. You could say someone drew all over your bed with the pen, right? Let's say your bed is all white and this is a black pen. Well, black pen went all over your white bed, right? It's easier to see, right? Now the last one, you got drawers, so you know, full of clothes in there and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna say, I've got more chocolates here. This office has gone crazy. Um, you know what, I'm gonna say spray. There's some sort of a spray here in the office. I don't, I'm not sure what this is, it's a multi-purpose one. So, there we go. We've got spray and I'm spraying the drawers. I don't want any germs in there, right? Now, yeah, that's, that's kind of boring. So how can we improve it? Right? Maybe I spray the clothes inside the drawers and it's all wet. Right? So you can make that association. Now, to be able to recall, all you have to do is go back here. Right? So let's test you out. Let's see if you can remember. Right? I didn't go back and repeat anything for you. I just made some stories. Let's see if you can remember. So the fence. What was happening on the fence? You got it? The door. What happened to the door? Something was thrown at it. 
broken. Window. Something went through the window, right? If you remember the story, you'll remember the item inside that folder, right? The bed. What was happening on the bed? And finally, the drawers. What do we do to the drawers? Right? If you recall that really easily, right, then you're able to use this technique successfully. And, you know, we just did five. You can have 50, 500, 5,000 of these, right? Uh, obviously, you'd have to memorize the 5,000 or have them in a spreadsheet like I do uh, because I don't fully memorize my locations. But you can use them for so many things, right? And I'll create more videos on how to use this method for more practical applications like, you know, speeches or for exams or studying or things like that because, um, you know, it's a really powerful technique, but there are other techniques in there as well. So stay tuned. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. If you follow me on all the other socials, just say hi, message me. Uh, I promise I'll message back and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.